today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics, as you can see, where we have Hurricane Nigel and some other tropical disturbances that we do need to talk about. We're also going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, where we do have a lot of storms on the way, a homegrown tropical system perhaps on the way, which we're going to talk a lot about. This is going to be bringing severe rainfall and winds to the East Coast, potentially, so we're going to be talking a whole lot about that, obviously. And then we have some temperature changes on the way that we're also going to be diving into. Now, before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather. That's going to be in the description and pinned comment down below. We do early access to all of our seasonal and monthly forecasts there. We do have our third winter forecast coming out there very, very soon, where it will be exclusive for a couple of weeks there. We also do weekly consulting calls among other consulting services. So there's a lot going on in there for only $5 a month in the description and pinned comment down below. Let's dive into things. And first things first, Hurricane Nigel, as you can see, expected to kind of continue on this northeastern trajectory, remaining at hurricane status until about Friday, where it'll drop to post-tropical storm status and kind of stay that way as it approaches Iceland very, very slowly. This should be a pretty potent storm bring a lot of rainfall if it was to in fact impact anywhere like Iceland or maybe even England going to have to be on high alert for that. Um, the UK in general, I would say. So we're going to be watching very, very closely for this storm, for some European impacts. This is again going to be a pretty potent storm if it did create impacts for those areas. A lot of rainfall, a lot of winds would be the biggest concern. As we take a look at the overall tropics, we do see Hurricane Nigel there and then two disturbances. One here is our main development region area here that we've been talking about for a couple of days now. This one is a code red, which indicates a high chance of formation. We do see a 10% chance over the next 48 hours and then a 70% chance over the next seven days. Certainly something to watch very, very closely. So we're going to be watching for this one, especially as it's kind of going to ma mainly move towards that Caribbean area. And as we know, that kind of creates a lot of possibilities for impacts. And then we have this homegrown system. Again, the one we're going to be focusing on quite a bit here today. This one has a 10% chance of formation over the next 48 hours and then a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. And because this is a homegrown system, we're really not too concerned whether or not it'll be a tropical system, although that is of course going to lead towards major implications. But I say that in the sense of that's not going to make the difference between rain and no rain. This is going to be a storm system regardless. There will be wind, there will be rain, and we're going to be talking about that because that is a almost sure thing at this point. Now, as we take a look at the upcoming pattern, we will see this going on. For this afternoon, what we're mostly seeing is drier conditions near the eastern seaboard, with the exception of the pretty far deep southeast there. We also see that a lot of the south central up through the upper Midwest areas are dealing with some thunderstorm activity. We do have a storm system here near Utah and Nevada. So we see a lot of thunderstorm activity, showery activity, and even some snowfall there for the Canadian Rockies here for the day today. As we move towards tomorrow, what we're going to see here is by tomorrow afternoon on Thursday, September 21st, we see a pretty big uh, expansion of this storm system here. We have two lows, 1,004, 1,005 here, but the overall level of storminess that we're seeing does not reflect that week of a low pressure system. We're actually seeing some kind of overperformance of these, if you will, uh, with some snowfall here for the Rockies, as you can see. So we're certainly seeing that at this point. Uh, heavier rainfall here for a lot of the northwest. The plains here, we're seeing a lot of this activity as well, all the way up through Minnesota, North Dakota, down through South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri. We're seeing a lot of thunderstorms developing. And overall, this is where we're watching for potential development. This big pocket of just storminess, I would say. And we're going to be watching for a potential low to develop within there. Currently, as of tomorrow, bringing impacts for states like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. We're only going to see that worsen by Friday, uh, where by the afternoon hour, we already see this one heading northward, developing into a low, and we see rainfall expanding here to the southeast coast in general. And by the time we're taking a look at that evening, we see some heavier rainfall, some heavier winds moving on shore, mostly to the coastal areas of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Southeast Virginia. There is a pretty intense storm takes place. For Saturday afternoon, we will see this low approaching. Still some very, very, I don't know why I got so big. Just ignore that. Uh, we'll delete that off the screen there. But we see our low here is 1,003. 
Uh, so certainly not a weaker low pressure system at this point. It is a pretty decent storm. Nothing crazy like a hurricane or a major hurricane by any means. But the rainfall is going to be a pretty big concern here for the eastern seaboard. By the time we're reaching later on that afternoon, we can see that overnight we're going to see that low developing into 1,004. Uh, and it is basically near the outer banks of North Carolina, continuing to bring wind and heavy, heavy rainfall still to these areas uh, over the course of the weekend. For the day on Friday, we will see it move offshore of the uh, kind of mid-Atlantic areas there. We do see another storm system here, 1002, and this one does have a cold front uh, kind of going on with it, a little bit of a warm front perhaps up here. That is what we're seeing. And we would be watching for some pretty potent thunderstorm activity, perhaps, on this front quadrant of that storm. By the time we're reaching Monday, what we see is a quieter look here for the west, a quieter look here for the east. And really, we just see this storm system that's in between bringing the most impacts. And then the northwest has a little bit of a storm system moving through as well there. So that's Monday the 25th. Tuesday the 26th here, what we see is, again, that northwest area. Uh, seeing impacts, we see that four areas of the upper Midwest down through the deeper south, we see some activity. The southeast here has thunderstorms, and then we see some showers up here across the northeast as well. So pretty active across the board here. Wednesday, we can see, again, still the northwest, especially that Pacific northwest, so the very, very far northwestern areas, seeing some heavier rainfall. Very quiet everywhere else in the west. Don't know how that's happening again, like I said, with the bigger bigger pen there let's get rid of that so mostly quieter here and then as you draw a line here near the mississippi river better yet near the mississippi river let me draw this correctly this time something like that we can see to the east of that area is mostly where we're seeing some thunderstorm activity and showery activity in general there on wednesday the 27th uh tuesday the 28th it's a lot of the same uh perhaps another coastal system trying to develop off the southeast coast so we're going to be watching closely for that by Friday, we see this moving up into areas of the, again, southeast and mid-Atlantic, almost very similar here, bringing heavy rainfall to Virginia and North Carolina once again. And then for Saturday, we will see this moving closer to the mid-Atlantic if this does in fact take place. And we would be watching for a nor'easter type storm, perhaps some tropical aspects to it. Uh, we'd be having to watch that fairly closely here. Now, the total precipitation as a result of all this leads towards very intense rainfall to a lot of the eastern seaboard here, all the way from Florida up through the mid-Atlantic. As you can see, a lot of this dodges the northeast, so we see a quieter week here overall. So all of this activity kind of wants to move around that area. We see that the northwest gets hammered with that storm, and that continues to bring heavier rainfall. And then we see for the Rockies and a lot of the plains here, some heavier rainfall also. Now, overall, the temperature pattern, let's just roll through this. And as we can see, we're going to see some cooler temperatures along the eastern seaboard through the week, like I mentioned. But as we reach into the weekend and afterwards, what we begin to see uh, is this slowly takes over to the point where we see this strongly negative PNA pattern, which is short for Pacific North American Oscillation. This encourages warmth to surge all the way upwards into Canada there on the eastern end of things. And we see this taking place here. Classic, classic stuff, and this would spell an end to that kind of cooler pattern and maybe a warmer pattern to start things out in October and to close things out in, October, in uh, September. But we'll have to watch this closely and keep up to date with it with you guys daily. Speaking of daily, we do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe for daily weather uploads just like this one. Be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.